Hello and welcome to the latest edition of the TR Business Adapt and Survive Skype video series. Today we are joined by Ben Roberts, Clogai Managing Director. It's great to see you again and I'm just really disappointed we have to like meet and talk in circumstances like this. Um, first of all, um, I know we're going to discuss um, about how the business has been impacted, but uh, it would be. But first of all, how are your family, colleagues, and friends in this difficult time? Is everybody well? Because that's the most important thing before anything. That's really kind to ask, Andrew. Um, everyone's fine. Everyone's good. Everyone's fit and healthy. Thankfully, we live in Wales, so um, we're less affected, I guess, by uh, by this sort of thing by, than the rest of the world. Obviously, we're not so densely populated, but um, it's a lot easier to stay in. Um, at home when you don't live in a city centre. Um, but yeah, here at work, um, we're all getting on okay. There's nobody who's been seriously affected by this, maybe the odd relative, but uh, yeah, we're all good. We're all healthy, thank you. And how is it? And how has it been getting used to like a new work schedule? I mean, I imagine you were working from home. Is it, has it been like a, like a change, big change? Uh, actually, we're not working from home at the moment. Um, we have a, st a number of staff, uh, 170 in total. Um, we're down to 10% of that now, so 90% uh, of them have gone home, and 10% of them are operating like me from the uh, from head office. So a small group of us, 15, 17 people, all working away here in Wales. And what's the mood among the team like? I mean, is it, I guess there might be some contrasting uh, reactions to the situation. Is everybody like remaining upbeat? Yeah, very much so. Um, I'm not sure what it is, but when you go from um, an awful lot of people to a very cut down number of people within the office, um, something happens to communication, something happens to motivation, um, and everybody's working in each other's jobs, so um, it's a lot more collaborative than it was before, and I think that really sets a spark within everybody here at the office, and um, I think motivation's are probably at an all-time high, communication's way up as well. Everybody's um, enjoying mucking in, I think that's probably the way I'd put it. It's important to keep that team spirit, even when uh, you maybe maybe there is a slightly different routine. So it's great that everyone's in high spirits. Yeah. Um, how are you all? Um, how are you as a company looking to position yourself for the recovery with travel retail and duty free in mind? That's a good question. Um, travel retail and duty free um, are a small percentage of our overall business, um, but it's one that we look to for awareness, brand recognition, and um, of course, it puts us up there with some of the best brands in the world. Um, I'm most looking forward to getting through this sort of transitional stage, as terrible as it might be, and coming out the other side and, and sort of evaluating the landscape, I guess, uh, seeing who's there, who's not, because there are admittedly a few jewellery brands looking and reviewing um, travel retail, leaving more of an opportunity for us, maybe. Um, we're committed to travel retail. We know we're here for the long term and uh, we enjoy the industry as well. So, uh, yeah, coming out the other side, looking at the landscape and also looking at all the opportunities for me is quite an exciting idea. And how are things progressing for Clogai, uh, like at the start of the year before the uh, crisis kicked in? Well, our, um, our financial year starts uh, October the 1st. So we're just coming up six months. Um, well, we are actually six months up through our financial year and we were um, performing at around 20 percent up which is unusual for jewellery at the moment. Um, and we are what I'd call a rising star here in the UK. Um, that's UK business only, 20% uh, up. And uh, we were quite excited for the rest of the year. Obviously, we could see Corona coming um, and didn't realise the effect that it was going to have. Uh, but walking into the office nearly two weeks ago now, finding that revenue was 30% uh, of what it was in total the day before, um, really set a few panics uh, or a few shivers down my spine, I should say. I mean, do you still think it's possible to like, uh, you think it could be possible to salvage something uh, from this year in terms of travel retail and duty free? And just really, how do you, what's your gut feeling overall that uh, in terms of how your travel retail and duty free business will transpire in comparison with your forecast at the start of the year? Well, that's, a good, um, that's kind of an interesting comparison uh, with the rest of the UK and travel retail for me because we were performing at such a great level before this um, and travel retail was included in that. We were up in travel retail and we were picking up some nice new customers as well, um, including the likes of Emirates, um, who fast became our top performing uh, in-flight partner. Uh, so we were, we were looking at this year with a lot of sort of optimistic plans, I would say. Uh, 
now. Uh, planes are grounded. Cruise ships are um, being called back to dock and uh, airports are not what they used to be in terms of footfall. So none of the shops in the airports are actually pulling customers in. So we've had to totally revise plans. Where we put that number at the moment, I don't know. Um, I couldn't even say whether it's 30 or 50% of what we were going to do uh, at the beginning of the year, um, but it will be well down. Um, but I think everybody will be well down. But it's not like um, it's not like the tobacco ban, where tobacco in isolation was um, was the one area that dropped out. This is across the board. So whether you make travel plugs, cables, uh, chocolate, um, any of the items that we see at any of the TFWA fairs. Uh, we're all in the same boat here, and um, unfortunately, uh, whilst I'd like to say jewellery is exclusively going to um, make it through this, it's not. It's 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 across the board. So yeah, we all we all going to have to um, readdress where we thought we were going to be. Um, I would like to say we might come out 50% of where we plan to be, um, but even that might be a bit optimistic at the moment. Mm -hmm. And just um, just gaining more of an insight in, in terms of jewellery and watches, how do you think the crisis is affecting the jewellery and watches se sector, perhaps in comparison to, in comparison with some of the other um, product categories in duty free and travel retail? OK, um, it's kind of we just covered this really, but I think if you compare jewellery um, to, say, let's say cosmetics, because cosmetics is an area that's grown and grown over the last few years especially since we entered into um, entered into the travel retail world. Um, there is a lot of price consciousness within travel retail. Everybody's looking for something that they can't find somewhere else uh, at the same price. So I think with regards to jewellery, we're making exclusive product for airlines or cruise ships where you can't compare what is out there. And um, if you want to look on Amazon or you want to look in travel retail, um, say in a, a visa shop or something like that, then you will find different product that you can't compare through us, uh, through our brand, uh, which takes the price sensitivity out of it. But I think with declining footfall, everybody's going to be hit across uh, across the board. So whether it is cosmetics and they are making something different or something the same in each of their outlets, I think that we are all unfortunately in the same boat. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, having recently spoken with Gabruda Heinemann uh, mm. and, and a couple of other travel retailers, Dave Light indicated that jewellery and watches um, has long been like a strategically important category in terms of their duty free and travel retail portfolio. Do you believe in your heart of hearts that this will continue with the same momentum once we start to recover from this crisis? Or, or do you think that there could be some form of change here? Well, Somebody said to me the other week, they said, I can't wait for this all to be over because we're going to have the biggest party ever. Um, now, that is a very, very optimistic thought, but I think there's going to be a very, very gradual change when we come out at the end of this. Sure, we'd all like to go out and just have a great big party and be in a pub again, but I think that's actually going to be a gradual change. I was speaking to somebody in Hong Kong this week and they've started shopping again. Um, they're on the high street. Obviously, they're all still wearing masks. They did that for years before. Um, but the um, the Hong Kong consumer is out in force again. What they're not doing is they're not going to bars and restaurants yet, um, because I think that actually, um, in their mind, is still a risk. Uh, so, yeah, I think we'll see shopping come back first and then maybe social gathering, uh, maybe uh, social proximity uh, coming in a little bit later. I think um, the idea of uh, being rammed in a stuffed pub uh, is probably going to be a little while till we all get used to that idea. I think I was watching TV the other day and um, it was something about Formula One and everybody was standing in really, really close proximity. And you think, crikey, I've only had about a week and a half of this and I already think that's weird. So, yeah, I think um, I think it's going to take some some getting used to it before we're bar in bars and restaurants. But shopping, I think that will come first. I mean, I'm definitely looking forward to all the networking, all the shows again, uh, yeah, and, uh, when everything um, is back on again. Um, have you been um, in touch with your partners regularly and uh, in travel retail and duty free? And can you just elaborate a little bit more? I know you just touched on it about like like how what their mood is, how they're feeling, because as I said, I imagine you've been in touch quite regularly in this period. Yeah, um, 
my contacts in Hong Kong are more suppliers than they are consumers. We had a couple of shops over in Hong Kong, China a while back. Um, but the level of business we do over there is um, is very small. But the mood over there does seem to have changed over the last week or two. So as we've um, dug ourselves deeper into this hole uh, with COVID-19, um, they're actually digging themselves out. So I think they are happier as a nation. What they're not doing in Hong Kong is traveling into China because that's still seen as a risk. Um, plus there's a two week isolation period uh, before you're allowed out. So that makes it very unattractive. Um, and it's the same for us visiting Hong Kong or um, maybe even China. There's a two week isolation period which you have to go through to come out. So unless you're very, very desperate to travel there, I wouldn't I wouldn't bother. Um, but yeah, it's definitely their, their mood is definitely becoming more optimistic now. They're going back to work. Uh, my friend Ronald, uh, he told me that um, he's actually traveling by bus. Um, you know, so it's a big step that, um, you know, because you're in close proximity to other people. Social distancing is more difficult. Um, so to be traveling by bus in Hong Kong is a big step. So I think, uh, yeah, they're coming out of it. Europe, uh, well, we're all in this together. We're all at the same point, aren't we? Um, and America, too. It's amazing how it's kind of swept Europe and America at the same time. But I guess it's just a matter of how it's traveling. And what would be your message to your uh, to your duty free and travel retail counterparts in this difficult time? I mean, you seem like you have a really optimistic approach, having spoken to you for these last uh, t- this last ten minutes or so. But what would ha- but what would be your message to perhaps some of your industry counterparts who who like fear the worst going forward? Well, I think the biggest issue for everybody is uh, for here is cash. Um, I think as a business, you have a holy grail, and that holy grail right now is your bank account and um, I think a lot of people are basically looking at this crisis and thinking how long can I last I spoke to somebody in our industry the other day and they said I've only I can only I can only go through this for one month Um, in the UK I think the average business holds three months worth of cash Um, we're in a very healthy position I must say that we're we're quite um, liquid as a business and there's no borrowings so clog is a strong strong business so we, we will make it through this but um the only advice i would give um is apart from paying me first <laughs> would be um uh to be very careful with cash don't pay anything out that you think you don't need um prioritize your most important customers and your most important suppliers um those those strong relationships they need to be kept and they need to be pulled out the other end of this so um yeah look after your best relationships i would say and just one final one from me. Um, are you still pressing ahead with like new projects, new plans with travel, retail and duty free in mind? I mean, obviously, look, we're in a crisis, but it doesn't stop you considering uh, new innovations going forward. I guess. Yeah, um, actually, we were talking about that yesterday. We were actually amongst all of this. We we're talking about new product yesterday. So um, we make product exclusively for travel retail and we also make it exclusively for our UK wholesalers. So. We're a little bit selfish here in the, in Clogo. We've got uh, five channels to market. We've got what we call wholesale, which is B2B. Uh, that is selling to 300 stockists here in the UK, usually independently owned. Some of them are chain stores. Um, then secondly, we sell direct to the consumer. So that's, let's say, majoritively through the web. Uh, thirdly, uh, we do UK shopping channels. Um, fourthly, we would have a distributor, maybe in other countries like China. And fifthly, we have travel retail. So right now, the only functioning um, channels to market that we have are the consumer. So the web, the web's absolutely going crazy because we haven't got 300 stockists selling our product anymore and our own shops, which we closed down, uh, of which we have 10. Um, uh, We have uh, obviously, in in addition to what we're selling on the web, we also have travel retail. So we've actually got a few airlines asking for product now for delivery in three or four months time, which we're hoping to supply. And we've got shopping channels. Everything else, the other two, um, have closed down. So the shopping channels want to go on air next month, video conferencing very much like we are now. Um, So for all those channels that we do still survive with, um, we need new product. So yesterday we were talking about developing just for the UK market. But what we're going to do is we're going to cut down the amount of product that we're developing. So every six months we usually develop 100 products. This time we're going to develop 30. So we brought it down from 100 to 30 just to protect cash. Uh, So getting out the other end of this, uh, should we not have as much cash as we need to order 100 products 
just protecting ourselves, we're going to cut that down to 30. And maybe we'll be one of the very few jewellery companies who've got new product at all. Well, it seems like you have a really clear plan in place and I wish you wish you and your team all the best with everything. Um, Thanks, Andrew. It's really great to speak to you again um, after so long and uh, I look forward to meeting you again in happier circumstances. And uh, please stay safe. You too. Stay safe, Andrew. Thank you very much for your time. Cheers. Bye-bye.